Hello everyone. This week the iRacing Formula 4 series heads to Road America, so let's see how we get on. Here we go with 10 laps of Road America in the FIA F4 in iRacing. Four red lights alive. Lights out and away we go. We get a pretty average start. Pretty equal with both the guys behind and the guys ahead here. Keeping an eye on the three cars ahead. That's Marcus, Daniel and Sergio in the 14, the 10 and the 20. Three wide on the way down into turn one. I hang back a little, back off early. Shift down early. See if we can make the most out of any mistakes up ahead. Marcus gets a poor exit and we're up his inside on the way down into turn three and make up a position up into to P13, looking for a good exit, but Marcus gets a better one. He is right behind me as we rocket our way down to turn five. I'm trying to get as much of the slipstream from the cards up ahead as I can, but Marcus is gaining by the meter as he dives to the inside. I decide to try and run it round the outside as we head down to our braking markers, but I'm asking too much of the car on lap one, locking up and heading wide, losing three or four positions as cars stream by me on the inside. Let's take a look at the replay, heading down into turn five for the first time. Cold tires, cold brakes, and I'm just asking too much of the car too early. Four cars pass us on the inside as we drop down into P17. On to lap two, and we've got a great slipstream on Reese as we go down the start finish straight. No moves to be had to turn one. We can see ahead they're still scrapping for positions as we start the second lap. Two wide into turn one once again, and they're still too wide on the way down to turn three. Lock up the rear right, and Joel slips right. down our inside and gains a position right. on us. Yet more ground for us to make up. If we stick to the back of this train, there'll surely be opportunities to make some places. We keep our eyes on the back of Joel as we make our way down oh, to turn five. And all of a sudden, flag. there is a yellow flag as he smoked like up ahead. Take answer. it easy through turn five. There's a car on our outside in the gravel. And we just slip it through these two cars in the middle. Let's take a look at what happened there. So a couple of cars ahead of us. These two go too wide into turn five. Front right hits rear left and they both collide. And the car behind spins out in sympathy. Let's look at it from his POV. He sees a collision up ahead. Tries to go to the inside, I think. He just loses the rear and has a little bit of a spin. The guys behind make a good job of keeping out of his way. We see another spin behind for the number 20 car. What happened to him here? As we're on board from the car that's ahead of the 20 on the way down. The number 20 tries to make a dive down the inside, has to take evasive action, clips the 20, but manages to stay safe otherwise. And we, coming onto the scene, manage to avoid all of the carnage and slip through, making up four positions in one corner. On to lap three, and Joel has made it past Reese up into P12. We're just behind Reese on the entrance to turn five. And Reese overcooks it, he loses the back end. We gain another position, get a slight tap on the way by. So we take a look at the replay here. The number 12 of Reese just loses the rear end here on the entrance to turn five and backs it into the wall, loses his rear wing, and is out of the race. Looking at it from our point of view here, we just tap him on the way by and get a 4x. A little unfortunate, but that's the way these things go. On to lap four at turn three. We turn in, we make a little bit of a mistake here, trying to carry a little bit too much speed out onto the grass. We get a 1x and lose a bunch of time here. We lose about a second and a half by the time we get to the end of the moraine sweep. And much like the start, we're in no man's land again. About four seconds to the cars behind, four seconds to the cars ahead. But before we can settle into a rhythm, there's a yellow flag taking it easy as we go through turn five. And on the exit, we can see a rear wing on the left-hand side of the track. Wonder what's happened there. We enter this blind left-hander being cautious once again, trying to avoid any issues might be happening in front. Looks all clear as we get on the full throttle power around turn seven. We see a car backwards in the wall on the right-hand side. As we look at the replay, it's car 2 and car 13 on the way down into turn 5, side by side. Which one of them is going to be braver? Car 13 on the inside just clips a wheel on the grass and spins them two spinning as well. He takes a bit of a clout and loses his rear wing on the exit. He scampers 
up the hill to this blind left-hander and once again two wheels on the grass has a little bit of a moment tries to keep it pinned to not lose any more positions onto the curbing round turn seven loses the rear end and spins backwards backwards into the tire barrier as we go on board with the 13 hit, we see him just clip the grass and lose the rear end. And we see that he gets clouted by this four car up ahead. Does he know he's lost his rear wing? Who knows? But he lines up round this left-hander. Again, clips the grass. That's a little bit of a moment. Corrects it down to the right-hander at turn seven. Little tentative on entry. Stabs the throttle and spins the rear. Cars behind do a great job to avoid him. He's backwards and into the wall and out of the race. On to lap six, and we're heading down the back straight here. Tobias Johansson in the number six car, right behind us, takes the inside line on the way down to Canada Corner. Which one of us is going to be P12 on the way down to the start finish line? Tobias pins it to the inside with a brave move. Great pass there from Tobias in the six car. Makes his way up to P12. We move down a position to P13, and we try to stay on his tail. Heading towards the final corner. Crucial that we get this exit correct, but I lock up on entry we lose speed we lose time and Tobias gets away from us we're sat in p13 with less than half the race to go lap seven and we're making our way down to turn five once again evan craven's got a run on us down the straight he pulls to the inside as we make our way down to the braking zone yellow flags oh contact up ahead three cars involved we managed to weave our way through we do get a 4x on the way by but no damage as we make our way up the hill into the blind left hander and there's contact once again three cars involved again we just about managed to keep ourselves out of it what in the world happened there Let's look at how this started, the 8 car, the 10 car and the 2 car in an almighty battle on the way down into turn 5. They make it 3 wide as we enter turn 5. Car 8 on the outside takes evasive action as the 10 and the 2 collide. And they're stuck together on the outside of the circuit. The 10 commits the cardinal sin and hits the 6 on the way by. On board with the six car, and as you can see, he had absolutely nowhere to go. Front right sheared off, miraculously comes back onto the car. Keeps it together with a bit of steering damage as we head to the blind left-hander to find a car in the middle of the road, collides with the 18, and with steering damage, somehow carries on. Let's look at how the 18 ended up in the middle of the road. So he locks up on the way into turn five. Now he's defending hard on the way down to turn six. Blocks on the inside, heads to the outside to take the racing line. Side by side with the 11 and they touch. They spin and they collide on the exit of turn six. The 11 manages to get away, but the 18 reverses back and also commits the cardinal sin of driving onto the racing line, collecting both the six and the 19. On board with the 19 and he has nowhere to go as the six and the 18 collide ahead of him but he manages to continue on but that's not the end of the story for the 18 he almost takes out yet another car as he tries to get back onto the circuit very lucky for the blue car let's look at our journey through this madness we just clip the JPS liveried F4 going through turn 5 pick up another 4x and now we're heading down to turn 6 the blind left hander we keep it to the inside see the carnage had to just manage to get it slowed down as we make our way out of this absolute chaos. Back to our POV as we round turn 7 and we have Tobias Johansson ahead of us, the number 6 who was involved in the contact. He locks up on the way into turn 8 and as we head into the carousel, I try and get the best run that I can so I can slipstream him all the way down to Canada Corner. So we're gaining, gaining, gaining as he has a poor exit here and we're right up his chuff on the way down to the kink. We're gaining so quick I lift off here to avoid running into the back of him as I I go round his outside, but that gives Evan Craven the McLaren livery number 19 behind a run on me. And he's getting closer and closer as we make our way down to Canada Corner. I take the racing line and Evan Craven takes the inside. Bold move down the inside by the 19 of Evan Craven. Fantastic move there. It drops us down into P10. Let's have another look at the replay. The number six going so slowly as we round the kick. I have to lift off and that gives the McLaren a fantastic run as we exit the kink and make our way down to Canada Corner. Very briefly, three wide on the straight as I look to defend my position on the way down into turn 12. The McLaren lines up down the inside and a beautiful move gets him past me and up into P9. 
The battle may be over, but the war continues. Just half a second separates Evan, myself, and Mark behind as we round the final corner and onto lap number eight. I get a much better exit than Evan here, and I'll be slipstreaming him all the way down into turn one. He sticks to the middle of the road as I'm gaining, 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 and heads to the inside and just right. find enough space on the inside Still to there. get my car onto the racing line. We might have passed like? Evan before turn one as I right. Slipstream passing. Now I've just got to hit my braking markers. Braking hard just after the three cones. Heading my way to the inside as we move up into P9. Let's look at the replay here. The 19 got a poor exit and sticks it to the middle of the road. And there is just barely enough room for me to sneak up on the outside as we make our way down to turn one. Keep an eye on Mark behind though, gaining on the both of us as we head down into turn one. Everyone thinks better than to stick it up the inside as we make up a position. But he sticks two wheels on the grass as we round turn one. That gives the black and blue car of Mark a run down into turn three as he slips it down down the inside, the McLaren losing two positions in the space of just two corners. On to lap 8 and we're heading down to Canada Corner once again but we've got Mark gaining on us by the second behind. As I break early and hard, Mark gives us just a little love tap behind. Very lucky that we both came away from that unscathed. Mark apologising over the radio. Sorry John, you just keep breaking really hard. But to be fair, I think that was mostly my fault. As we round the final corner and into the penultimate lap, I don't get a fantastic exit out of the final corner here. And now you'll see the power yeah, of bad. the slipstream at Road America in the F4 cars. Mark was half a second behind exiting the final corner, but as we pass the start finish straight, it's down to just three tenths, two tenths now, as you can see in the top right corner of your screen, as the number 19 of Evan McRaven in the McLaren looks to join the party as well. Mark exits from my slipstream and down the inside. Very brave move. And manages to just keep it on the track on exit. And now we have two laps to see if we can retake P8. Heading through to Turn three, Mark gets ever so slightly wide, dipping a slither of the tire onto the grass, and that gives us a run down into turn five. Heading through the moraine sweep under the bridge, we are right up his chuff, gaining by the meter as Mark defends to the inside, forcing us round the outside if we want to have a go. We hit our braking marker, but we just can't carry the speed. Mark is ahead, but again, we're right behind him as we head into turn six. I lock up ever so slightly. I mean, we lose a bit of ground to Mark here, and I've got to keep my eyes on Evan Craven behind. Eyes back onto Mark ahead, and I know uh, my best opportunity up? to overtake will be down into Canada corner. So I try to get the best exit I can out of turn eight. I take much more of the inside curb here, taking all of the camber that I can. Swinging to the outside, back to the inside, lifting off early so I can plant my foot as early as possible and get as good a run down into Canada corner as I I can mark goes to the right hand side of the track here trying to break the toe as we head down through the kink looking at the delta i can see i am picking up time on mark gaining 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 on this penultimate lap of fia f4 at road america he defends to the inside i look for the switch back but he parks it on the apex and great defending from mark axelson in the 15 there i can ride up his chop and give him a little tap as we head through turn 13 and to the final corner of this penultimate lap looking for a good exit here I dip a wheel on the grass but still manage to be right behind Mark here down the start finish straight and to turn one for the final time Mark has been fantastically quick all race but can we pass him on the final lap to take P7 in what has been a thrilling race gaining all the time the 15 defense to the inside once again side by side as we enter turn one into the braking zone but Mark with the Fantastic bravery, keeps it committed late on the brakes and just keeps it on the road, pulls a half a second gap that he keeps to the end of the race. I'll take a P8. I'm pretty happy with that. Nice racing there, Mark. P8. Well yeah, done, mate. finish. Come on. Yeah, you too. Come on. <laughs> Holy cow, so many things happened that race. Joel, I hope both sides of your pillow are warm tonight. That's a sentence I never thought I'd read on iRacing. <laughs> Did you like this style of video? Let me know down in the comments below. And be sure to hit like and click subscribe and ring the bell so you never miss out on our latest uploads. I'm John from Top Split, and I'll see you 
out on track. <laughs>